Reverb is taking the relevancy and then latching it onto a culturally shared aspiration, angst, or maybe even a disparity. The brand or message serves as a parable to a greater social tension. It's not diluting the message, don't, don't go there, and it's not homogenizing the message, it's romancing it, or it's latching it on to a cultural myth, a story that we all as people use to better understand ourselves. For an example of a far-reaching reverb, let's turn to a product brand, but it's also a brand revered in this room, I know it, for its environmental activism. Okay, little story. In my other life, I'm a soccer dad, and on my daughter's Highlands Ranch um, soccer team, we're known as the hippie parents. I mean, it's true. We bring actual vegetables as snacks to games. <laughs> we have, um, you know, we use reusable water bottles instead of plastic ones, which I need to grab mine real quick. And it's whenever politics come up on this team, we are quick to shirk to some other place on the sidelines. Like sidelines, I mean, it's Highlands Ranch. Um, <laughs> however, one eye-opening scene I'll never forget was on a cold fall morning a few years ago. And there were five soccer moms that were talking about how awesome Sarah Palin had been in the debate the night before. <laughs> and it, before I ran away, I just, I noted that three of the five were wearing Patagonia down coats. WTF. <laughs> I mean, if they had any idea how different the agenda of, a, of Patagonia is to the wolf-killing, oil-drilling Palin, it just doesn't make sense. And now, is that because Patagonia whitewashes their deeply green hue, reverse greenwashing, we might call it? Not at all. No, instead, I think what Patagonia has done is they have transcended typical eco-rhetoric and given wilderness adventure an almost cosmopolitan appeal. Consider Yvonne Chouinard. Now, I was incredibly fortunate to get to spend a few days with Yvonne Chouinard. I, I got to go fishing with him and stay at his place in Jackson. And I can tell you, he is absolutely the real deal. I mean, he is the embodiment of the Patagonia brand. I mean, he is the, he is the moral authority of their dirtbag subculture. I mean, he drives a... <laughs> He won't replace his car. Here he is, a multimillionaire of a multi-million dollar company, and he drives a Toyota Corolla for like 67, 68, something like that. It's just, it's this beat up old thing. And it's, people look at him, they don't know who he is. They think he's a homeless guy. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, he is Teddy Roosevelt, Hey Duke, John Muir, Thoreau, Sir Edmund Hillary, all wrapped up into one capoling. His life, his Patagonia brand, it answers the long call of the wild frontier. Pretty American DNA, a lot of what Steve was talking about. There's a cultural reverb there more powerful than any political division. Look to it at Patagonia's environmental campaigns. The ocean as wilderness, let rivers run, freedom to roam. Those are not isolated tree hugger topics. Those touch on the very soul of what it means to be an American. America the beautiful, this land is our land, where the deer and the antelope play. Patagonia has tucked their brand, whether they wanted to or not, right in there. I, by the way, I think um, he's the most reluctant marketing guru out there, but I think Yvonne absolutely fits the, the quality of a, somebody that knows how to sell his message. In fact, an amazing story of him that I think many of you know is that he took his reverb and took it to the, the Walmart annual shareholder convention several years ago. I mean, the man, talk about going across the aisle because that, it's, it's that important to him and that kind of reverb. And he has the power to transform a company. I know I'm not supposed to use the word transform, sorry. Um, but he is, he's, he's, helping, he's helping make Walmart a better place. I mean, his, his, re, his reverb is real. Remarkable. Whatever message we want to deliver, it must cut through the clutter. It must be the one that stands out from those 3,000 daily marketing hits we're all taking. The message and its imagery must be provocative. It must be unexpected. It, it wasn't by mistake that I started with the homeless guy, actually me, in disguise, holding up that sign to begin with. The message has to be disruptive to conventional thinking, memorable, uplifting, remarkable, as in that it will get people talking. It will get them questioning the status quo, seeking more answers. The assumed danger here is that we're going to get people to overreact, and that, that triples about 90% of great marketing out there. Somebody goes, ooh, I'm afraid it's gonna be a little too nervous for people. 
and unfortunately, a savvy marketer realizes, or, re or fortunately, a savvy marketer will realize that a little overreaction is better than getting no response at all. And speaking of risky moves, here's the riskiest one I did at New Belgium. <laughs> it was also the most successful print campaign we did at New Belgium. To the best of my knowledge, this was the first time partial nudity, and actually there's a lot of photoshopping going on there. The, those, the good folks that got out in the pooter that day gave up, showed up a lot more than that. Um, but the first time partial nudity was ever, has ever been used in a cause-related, meaningful way, and in all things, a beer ad. As to the cause of keeping this great river, the pooter, my home river, damn free, I asked Gary Wagner, who runs the, the Save the Pooter, for any data that he might have supporting this. I was actually trying to get him to come down here to, to share with you the results, but he couldn't make it. But he did, he did send me an email. Greg, I can only offer anecdotal but very loud information about the success of the Skinny Dippers. The Skinny Dipper image and the Save the Pooter Association with New Belgium has completely changed the public dialogue about protecting the Pooter River. Whether you like dams or not, you cannot help but smile when you look at that image. Every single person, elected official, and agency rep I talk to remarks about the skinny dippers first and foremost, and ultimately last, whether they love us or hate us. The image breaks out of the marketing clutter. A smile is an extremely effective marketing outcome. And then Gary actually did have some, some actual measurable results. results. STP has 6,000 supporters now, and recently they sent out a petition to try to get the state of Colorado to, to protect another section of the, the Poudre River. They got 5,000 signatures in five days. Not bad for a small one river organization. With messages profuse and medias diffuse, sometimes you have to strip down the message to its most evocative to get people's attention, to get them remarking. Rally cry is the R that is the call to action. It gives the subjective an objective. People know how to turn a belief into a behavior. We've, if we want social change, this is how we're going to do it. Let's play Who Am I? Give you guys some guess who this is. I have roots, I've moved beyond awareness, and I've established passionate relevancy with my target audience. I have reverb, I've touched a chord with the masses. The media can't quit talking about how remarkable I am, but nobody's exactly sure who my marching orders are. Who am I? Absolutely. You ask 11 of these people why they're there, you're going to get 11 different answers. <laughs> I mean, they have mass belief and it is mighty, but just nobody knows exactly what to do with it. It's sadly kind of the bane sometimes of the liberal. My idea is so big and so important and so vital that once people know it, hear it, they're going to know exactly what to do with it. If we could only make people aware, right? Sorry for this next one. Meanwhile, we have the tea party. Step by step, sound bite by sound bite, hyperbole by hyperbole, they have made tangible change. Painful change granted to anyone half bright enough to see the corporate strings pulling the puppets, but they have created measurable change. 62 House reps, four senators. They have a clear rally cry, whether we like it or not. Vote anybody out, not standing for limited government. Lordy, I mean, they're facts are filtered to the benefit of big oil, big medicine, big real estate, but we have to give them a reluctant nod for effective social change marketing. A great rally cry collects the emotions of relevancy and reverb and turns it into energy. It turns belief into behavior. The old standard was that any advertisement needed to be viewed four to seven times for the audience to gain awareness. Still true. But remember, we're aiming for better than awareness. We're after relevancy, reverb, and a remarkable rally cry. So as we're going through against the currents of today's media perfusion and message diffusion, we need a greater splash than simply a repetitive ad buy. We need all possible messengers to make the same ripple together. For the product brand manager, this means orchestrating advertising, PR, social media, digital events, customer service, packaging, even the product itself, into one competitively distinct, unique story. For those of us here interested in a more sustainable Colorado, it's collaboratively integrating our marketing efforts into one remarkable rally cry. If we each have our own version 
a marketing message, we're probably only going to add to the 3,000 daily marketing hits out there. We could very well, I hate to say it, undermine each other's efficacy. Yet, if we're all working on the same six R's, that one message is exponentially rippled many times the sum of our parts. As well, those, all the, using all the same six R's makes that vastly better use of our limited resources. Canvassing Colorado with a, one single message will require a budget. But I'm fairly, and I'm, you know, I guess we could probably be fairly certain the Koch brothers are not going to be funding ours. But um, <laughs> I mean, if we all work together, we can calibrate our small booty for an optimal delivery of the six R's. For my final example, I reached out to this cool network of friends that I have. It's a group called the Eco Partners in Marketing. And it was originally started by Patagonia and Ben and Jerry's by the sustainability directors of those companies. And in 2003, they started inviting the marketing folks. So this is CMOs and directors of companies that um, we've all heard of, of course, Patagonia, 7th Gen, Annie's, HP, Cliff Bar, Timberland, Aveda. Um, there's some of the, the who's who's in, in environmentally steward type companies are there. I asked th this group of, of people that really have done a great job of sustainable messaging what they thought was a great example of an environmental statewide PSA. When after some deliberation, they came down to one that I found really interesting in that it's, well, it is environmental in goal, but it came from a state that isn't particularly known as an eco-safe haven. Any guesses? It's a little, it's a little dated, but it's, it's poignancy, and, and the way it's grown into a, a cultural icon is amazing. We could not think of a better PSA that hit all six requirements. It was launched by television, radio, print advertisements, but what really rippled it was having it on, a, is on all the, the highway signs across Texas. Exceptional relevancy. The campaign's target market they identified was 18 to 35-year-old males, AKA Bubba's, <laughs> that were the most prone to littering. However, they were also the most prone to be polarized by a message of Texas pride. Reverb, the slogan has become a cultural icon. I mean, it is now, it is now symbolic of textual, Texas culture. It's too bad we don't have that. Too bad Colorado doesn't rhyme with mess. Because I mean, it would be a great one to capitalize people around it. It also nails what I guess we could call the magical seventh R, results. Could Best with Texas truly convince all these bubbas that throwing crap out of his, his truck window was not a God-given right? Well, it did. 72% reduction in the first four years of the campaign and litter along the highways. Belief was turned into dramatic change in behavior. Now, I know I started this gig cynical about marketing. 90% of it fails. But I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think we could earnestly, if I didn't believe that we could earnestly turn a sustainable Colorado message and nail the six R's and deliver a, the seventh results. So within the context of this roundtable as well, I couldn't have asked for a better rally cry in here. I mean, come on, Coloradans, do you want to be outdone by Texas? <laughs> oh, never. We're still bitter about the loss of the Dallas Cowboys. As a Colorado native, a CSU grad, a fourth generation fly fisherman, a soccer dad, a business owner, an owner of 23 acres of beetle kill pine, as a two decade student of marketing, I know the sustainable story in Colorado has roots, as pure, literally and figuratively, as Rocky Mountain spring water. The need for a sustainable story has never been more imperative or more under attack. How gripping is our relevancy? In this room, I know it's I can't sleep at night relevant, but to reverb that to the majority of Colorado residents, I don't think is really that much of a stretch goal. I mean, all Coloradoans, they love their exceptional quality of life our wild west frontier, the mountains just being outside our doorstep, our clean air, our pure water, our good schools, our good jobs, all the stuff that makes Colorado one of the greatest places to live on the planet. I mean, do you ever see Iowa native bumper stickers? <laughs> if a message could awaken our emotions that good Colorado living was in doubt, I think our collective ears would perk up. I'm no guru, say to that from the start. But I know a real marketing opportunity when I see one. It's a matter of reframing sustainable Colorado to make it critically relevant in the broad swath of Colorado. With either shock, outrage, humor, irony, empathy, heart pull, uplift, or likely some combination, 
It is a matter of opening their eyes and opening their mouths. We must get Colorado remarking. It is a matter of rally cry. Let's harmonize our message. Let's take climate change, community, economic develop, development, education, energy, transportation, food, public health, conservation, water, and find it all into one single call to action. It's a matter of ripple. Honestly, I do want to mess with Texas. Our issue is much bigger than bubble littering. We need to collect all the stories in this room, all those great pieces of poetry that we had, and focus them into one relevant, reverberating, remarkable call for action. Just as important as the message is the messengers. Our best media is our collective selves. Instead of spattering drops, we need to unite as one seismic ripple. Ultimately, it's a matter of result. An imperative must get result. We must, we have to join the elite 10% of marketing that succeeds. And again, I'm gonna to to go back and claim that the six requirements are there for the culti cultivating. Our roots are in the ground. We find, let's go find our most relevant truth. Let's, let's culturally revarb like Yvonne Chouinard. Let's get to the bare naked remarkability. Let's out rally cry the Tea Party. Let's mess with Texas. Let's, get, let's make a story of real sustainable belief behavior and action in this, as my soccer moms would say, awesome state of ours. Thank you. <laughs>